This is uh, Victor Dandridge. Hello. And me, Ryan Seymour, with the inaugural episode of Black, White, and Red All Over. Oh, yeah. Off oh, the yeah. Rack. We want to take a moment to talk to you guys about some books that are coming out uh, this Wednesday. I'm going to start off with Fantastic Four by James Robinson. I'm going to talk about Revenge by Jonathan Ross, who you've probably seen on BBC. And then we're going to talk about Deadly Class by Rick Remender, who takes the Xavier School for the Gifted and makes it like Wanted. Welcome to a brand new episode of Black, White, and Red All Over. I'm Victor Dandridge. <laughs> Ryan Seymour. What a momentous <laughs> yes. occasion, sir. Mm -hmm. This is episode 250. Yep. I'm all riled up on cake and sugar. Yeah, and we've, <laughs> oh. <laughs> we've had lots of laughs, mm -hmm. lots of cake. The yeah. cake was good. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah. So we had cake uh, courtesy of... Froggy Sweets and More. Yes, in uh, out in Pickerington. Um, our producer, Shelby Hunt, brought some in. And uh, check out our Instagram because you can see how awesome it is. Uh, Ryan did the craziest thing ever uh, by putting out the candle with his fingers. Yeah, it was, it was a first for me. I've never done that. Like You've I've, never done that? I've put out candles and fires and other means and liquids. Please, not your body. Okay, we're just going to... Okay. That'll really yeah. Edit it right. Out yeah. Um, hopefully, <laughs> Jeremy's no, no, saying no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. But okay, so you you you've snuffed a flame mm -hmm. with the flick of your fingers here. Yeah. You <laughs> Thanos the flame. <laughs> makes me feel godlike. You are, man. <laughs> it's like the greatest gift that God's ever gave mankind. And you're like, miss. <laughs> Just, that'll learn you. <laughs> there you go. 250 episodes, yep. and now you've learned how to touch fire. Yeah. Boom! My job is here, people. This is what I do. This is what I do. Um, all right, so we had some some good uh, recommendations yes. this week. Yep, we did um, a few of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, quite a few. There's one that you did, and I'm so glad that you did it, so I didn't have to. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's start there, shall yes, we? Yes, 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 let's. Because, uh, yeah, let's get that all the way out the way. So one of the suggestions we got was Empty Man. Uh, number three, Cullen Bunn, Jesus Heveras. Mm. All right. Mm. So it picks up in the supernatural plague. Like, right. Because like up to this point, we don't know what's beyond that. So our, Touching it. it. Yeah. So the, the Oracle Whisperers, uh -huh. which uh -huh. is like a group of people that worship the Empty, empty Man, uh, have decided they're going to acquire uh, the person that is... It it's man, it's messed up. This is this is yeah. not okay. Yeah, it's, is that a Reagan mask? Yeah, that's a Reagan mask. Nope. They're, yeah. Nope. Nope. So there's like a whole bunch of people killed. There's people killed by dogs. Uh, there's like a supernatural critter comes crawling up out of another dead body. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh and, no. Yeah, and, and they're they're like killing an entire neighborhood. It, like it's dark. That's not okay. But if you're looking for something a little bit more saccharine, uh, like a hot topic dark, as opposed to like a like a like a dark. dark okay, okay. We've got like I love this by the way because I'm just messed up. He's individual. a dark man. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> also got Jughead the Hunger. Uh, this one's number eleven. Okay, okay. It is set in the dark Archieverse, which I could get with. Yeah. Uh, where Jughead is a werewolf, Sabrina really is right. still a witch, uh, and yeah, it's it's it's. Got Frankenstein type monsters. Uh, finally, the dog. Aww. Yeah, because remember Aww. how Jughead tried to get the. It actually started because Jughead was trying to save his or bring his dead dog back to life. And there you go. Yeah, it's touching. So that's one yeah. way to call it. That's one <laughs> way to call it. So there you go. You got those as options. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got this Aspen Visions uh, executive assistant Iris, the midst of chaos, mm -hmm. um, written by Blake Northcott. Uh, Donnie Tran is on the artwork. Um, here's a weird thing. Mm -hmm. This is kind of a, a strange thing to admit. Yeah. Aspen Comics, uh, a company that I've been familiar with, aware of for a very long time, yeah. not an active reader, and I have no real good reason as to why. Like, yeah. it was one of those things where I was like, why don't I read more Aspen yeah. stuff? Like, I couldn't tell you whether or not I'm a fan or not. Um, I don't read it enough. Yeah. So I was like, seeing this, brilliant. Um, the executive assistant angle uh, has always, like, once I, I heard about it, and this yeah. is like, you have this like pseudo killer style assistant, like secretary yeah. type person. It's essentially Mercy Graves, but yeah. willing to be hired out and, and murder kill for other people. Yeah. Um, but this one 
is like a matrix spin okay. on that. Like we'll we'll say that it's the matrixy meh on it. Yeah. Um, kind of a fun read. Like there's a certain point where, especially anyone that currently right now is a fan of Black Mirror. Um, okay. There's a moment. There's a Black Mirror Bandersnatch moment. Okay. We'll say in this that I was like, oh, that's dope. And so immediately, right on time for this book to come out. I think that's kind of a brilliant thing. Um, but yeah, like executive assistant. Like I feel like this is a series that I should have been a long time reader of, yeah. and it's my mistake that I have not been. It's good stuff. Uh, it, they they ship infrequently, which is like my one of my complaints about the Aspen I get stuff. That. I get that. Um, but it's really solid. And it's got their flagship title still around. Yeah. And that that shipped this week also. So. Oh man, see. Okay, good. I got stuff to jump on, yeah. which is good. I'm glad. What else you got over there? I went with Infinity Wars Infinity Number One. Uh, this one's that's very, a lot of infinity. It, it really is. <laughs> Infinite infinities number like, one. It almost feels like just get rid of the number one. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Infinity, yeah. infinity. Uh, <laughs> Gary Duggan, uh, and then one of my favorite artists, Mark Bagley, also oh. uh, did the did the art report, and it's setting up like what happened to the Infinity Stone, Stones after Infinity Wars finished okay. up, uh, and prepping us for the big th- yeah, like, oh yeah. So that that's that's person's coming to talk to to that person. Okay. So that's a, that's a conversation worth. Yeah, so it's beginning yeah. to to tie into the rest of the Marvel universe, like the big stuff that's been happening oh, in dope. Avengers and then Thor and whatnot. So it's it's no longer the, taking place on an island, and it also kind of gives you the the overview of what all is coming out in the next few months in the cosmic Marvel universe. That's awesome. So that's it was really awesome. really entertaining. The, okay, refresh mm-hmm. me if if we talked about this before yes. about Bagley being from Central Ohio. I do not recall that. Yeah. Is he really from Central Ohio? Like Mansfield. No way. Yeah, yeah, I grew up in Mansfield. Oh, wow. I found this out. Uh, we were at Supercon together, mm-hmm. and uh, I got to work with him and, and do a couple panels, and we were chatting it up, and he's like, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from Columbus. And he's like, Columbus, Ohio? And I was like, yeah. He's like, I'm from Mansfield. I'm like, what? How is this? Like, Ohio's got like, the best creators from here. Just sneakily. I said it. I said it. Well, I mean, look at it. You got Bendis from up north. Right. You got Chris Sprouse from yep. in, in, the, in the middle. Right. Daryl Banks is here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, literally the three Bryans, the yeah. three bald Bryans are all from Cleveland, mm-hmm. right? So you got Bendis, mm-hmm. you got Kayvon, mm-hmm. and you got Azarello, yeah. all from Cleveland, right? And we're not even going to mention the fact that Superman was created by two teens in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. No, we're not yeah. going to talk about that. I'll even say that, like, the closeness of where in Kentucky Kirkman and, and Tony Moore are from, mm-hmm. it's close enough. We'll count it's it as Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna, Cincinnati we're just gonna, crosses we're the We're just going to bring that in here. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. Um, Ohio rules. Heart of all things. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of Brian. Yes. Uh, so we've got Action Comics Superman uh, 1006. Um, this one, this is the slow burn okay. stuff, right? So this is the more Clark-centric stories that Bendis is building up to, but still dealing with this essential Court of Owls group yeah. that's that's operating in Metropolis. And what I love here is that it's really kind of going back to the notion of what will be effective for them. It's okay. not to destroy Superman. They, they're like, that's dumb. Yeah. We're not going to beat him. No, what, we, what we're trying to do is get back to something else that is easier to maintain and makes total perfect sense for a criminal organization operating in a town that Superman lives. Okay. So definitely read yeah. this. It's not like huge action, yeah. but it's like subtle things where you're like, oh, oh, that's smart. That's smart. So it's good. Ryan Souk did the artwork. Oh. That's beautiful. In fact, I actually saw on Twitter <clears throat> that somebody is campaigning, uh, like literally reached out to Bendis for help to try to get him to help get this page of artwork. This one. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right? But, I, okay, so in a weird sort of way, I feel like this is disrespectful in this place. Yeah. I'm like, what do you... What do you who do you think you are? Like you, you think you're better? Really? Yeah. That's what you do? It's an interesting choice. I mean, it is an interesting choice, but I'm like, nah. Nah. Not when, like, literally, you can you can run into me walking down the street. Yeah. And that's what you do? I'm just saying. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, will, I will admit, though, um, Superman gives a very interesting threat in this book okay. that we'll, we'll discuss later. But yeah. it's an interesting threat because, one, the notion of saying Superman threatens somebody, you're like, that's weird. It, yeah. But it works. It works really well. Yeah. So... <clears throat> All right, so, so we got the honorable mentions out of the way. All out of the way. Time, Let's go to the rack. For the acrylics. Mm-hmm. All right, um, we got two go that are the same. Yes. Uh, dang, that's tough. I, I know because I'm a big fan of that that title that you've read. 
It is a good one. You, you want, you want yeah, to... let's start with that. Okay. Kirkmanese zombie goodness. Yes. Speaking of more Ohio guys. Yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I didn't plan that, by the yeah. way. Like, this is, it like, really kinda... is, like, falling into place. I'm like, wait yeah, a minute. Yeah, I was just like, that's kind of cool. Okay. Um, okay, so we got Walking Dead. Where are we at? 187. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you right now, I'm so hurt because if I'm not mistaken, the math says that we won't get another uh, compendium until, like, fall of this year, Ugh. which is for yeah. ever. Ugh. Um. Everything is kind of in this weird disarray right now. Mm -hmm. Like, there's another community that they're dealing with, obviously, um, and there's turmoil. Last issue, there was a, a, an assassination attempt, yeah. and Rick had to do what Rick had to do to quell it, even though he was taking out one of his own. Yeah. So the ramifications of that and kind of setting this new stage for things is where this is going. And it's kind of interesting to see these characters that we know and love and trust... Yeah. Not necessarily being the bad guys, yeah. but positioned where they could be perceived that way. Yeah. And that's kind of fun. Um, I think that's one of the best things about Walking Dead is you can't go into this saying, oh, I watched the show, so I know what's going to happen. No. No, you don't. No. No. Sometimes the the safety of the show is what keeps things secure. The book, no. <laughs> no yeah. bars held back no. at all. Random anythings can happen. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. So... Yeah, Charlie Adlard on, on the artwork, of course, is still killing it. Um, that dude has made such an impact on this series. It's yeah. not even funny. Not even funny. Although I do hate the letters sometimes. The person that does the lettering, okay, I'm going to put, look, 2019, hashtag Scary V, okay? I like Gary Vanderchuk, mm -hmm. right? And so he goes by Gary V. So I've decided that there are going to be times when I'm going to put the nice guy down, mm -hmm. and it's Scary V talk. So I'm okay. going to hit it with the real. The lettering here... Mm -hmm. They do things where, okay, as a letterist using Illustrator, which is great, I love yeah. that, um, you will build a balloon and it'll overlap over the, the borders of a panel. Yeah. Okay, not a problem. But when you do certain effects that way, you kind of cut the, the balloon, mm -hmm. you still have to move the actual dialogue. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, here, I'll show you. Because it's kind of a weird thing, but it's, it's one of those things that grates my nerves. So here, the way that it rides that line, yeah. it's because they didn't move it down after they cut it which you should, yeah. like it adjusts just a little bit yeah. to not make it look so weird and tangent-like, yeah. which, again, hi, kids, I make comics. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when it's things like that, when you see behind the curtain a little bit, you get it like, ah, uh, stop doing do that. Yeah, just, yeah, just down, just a couple yeah. more, do, 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 and it's fine. But it creates a tangent, it looks yeah. weird. Yeah. So that's just me. Um, please don't beat me up, whoever is lettering that book, because they're like, I'm a professional. I'm like, I'm, no disrespect, no disrespect, but... Push it down, and I won't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Scary view. Over. Okay. Speaking of other words in other bubbles, <laughs> so got, uh, Vertigo is Books of Magic number three. Uh, yes. Cat Howard, Tom Fowler, Jordan Boyd, the uh, the top name creators. So we've got this Tim Hunter. It's like a re envisioning of the Tim Hunter becoming like the most powerful Ooh. magician thing, and it's it's continuing to go on. Okay. Um, uh, Tim is gaining power faster than he can control it. Mm. Hate it when it happens. Yeah, and there's people that are dying because right? of it. Uh, not like people that are dying directly because of him, and then also dying because people are trying to protect him or manipulate him. Oh, or, so he's he's in this bubble. I was gonna say he's very volatile right now. Yeah, okay. yeah. He's and he's freaking out. Cause he wants his whole his sole purpose right now in his mind is he wants to find his mother who's been missing, mm. and he's kind of a pawn, and he doesn't doesn't realize it. And That's he's, the worst. He, yeah. And the, the, the reoccurring, or the thing in this particular issue is reoccurring nightmares that he's got. Ooh. And I don't think he fully realizes yet how those are connected to reality. Mm. So it's it's a, it's a real exciting book. Uh, a lot more a lot more action than I would have expected from, okay. from a, like a Books of Magic type title. Right. Uh, really, really good. It's only issue three. Uh, so if you're looking for something with a little bit of bite. Mm. This is Neil writing, right? Uh, no, no. Who's, who is writing this? Cat. Yeah, Cat Howard's writing. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's so it's working off of that that original chassis. Got you, got you. Um, but it's it's real, real cool. I'm I'm digging it. I like it. I like it. I think uh, one of the things that is really good about books like this mm -hmm. for those people that aren't into fights and tights comics, yeah, but still want something that's not just slice of life. Yeah. Boom. This is there it, you right go. There. You got like that sense of reality with the extra bit of fantasy yeah. on top of it, which is really cool. Um, oh, yeah, imagine that too, because because one thing that's really cool, and like the deadly class thing, catching that. Yeah, I know, right? The, the sneak preview <laughs> it, it, it thing was over a night ago. It was really, really. Oh, cool. I didn't see that. Yeah, it was really solid. 
But it's like you're this this teenager you're right? in high school. We all know how much that sucked. Yes. And now you've got all those other pressures going on. Like it's it's really really neat how they're the they're best and him. worst of all worlds. Yeah, right there. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're they're absolutely nailing that feel. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right, <clears throat> Heroes in Crisis number four. Um, Tom King. Yeah. So good. I don't Clay um, Man. Also, it's just so pretty. Oh. The, 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 all the all the arts works in this. Yeah. Are just so good. Okay, so there are things here mm -hmm. that I will admit I am not up to speed on if and when they changed. Okay. There's a character here that I previously thought was unavailable. Mm -hmm. They don't seem to be unavailable or could be a manifestation of something else. Okay. Right? Um, I, I was really kind of taken aback by that. All right. I heard that they were supposed to be some sort of appearance, mm -hmm. but I just wasn't sure how that happened. I thought like maybe yeah. this was going to be an origin of that, but it doesn't seem to be. No. So okay. Yeah. Tom just kind of throws it out just, there. Okay. Yeah. So that's not like it's not just me being foolish and not having read something. That's just here. No. Yeah. Not to the best of my knowledge. <sighs> oh my goodness! I thought I was a total loser and did not read something I needed to. That makes me feel better. Yeah. That makes yeah, me feel better. It's definitely, it's beginning to move that that plot forward. Yeah. And especially that kind of character mixed in there. Right. You're kind of like, what's going on with that? Um, what I what I like is the notion that the, the Wonder Woman using the lasso. Yes. How that's supposed to be the oh, great. Oh, man. Way to just undercut that. Yeah. That was brilliant. Yeah. That was brilliant. Um, Wonder Woman is a character that, for all intents and purposes, doesn't have any weaknesses. No. Yes, in her early, you know, presentations, it was if you bind her, yeah. then she's powerless. But one of her greatest weapons, to find a way to circumvent that, yeah. that's brilliant. Yeah. Like, that's one where you're just like, oh, well, oh, well, that sucks. But, yeah. Like, so, like, it, it, it makes you think, like, there are certain people that if she tried to use it on, mm -hmm. it would be absolutely useless oh god her lassoing the joker would just be would be wrong that would be so yeah. wrong yeah on all levels i expect to see that by the end of this series oh my gosh, that'd be <laughs> like, like last wing harley like that could be just as bad mm -hmm. just as yeah. bad like literally just as bad i oh yes um i will say Spoiler, not spoiler. Mm -hmm. Batgirl is in this issue. Yeah, a really interesting interaction very with somebody interesting. I would not have. Very, very interesting. Because they both, if she sh shares in common with the other character. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Never. That, that one person is actually a negative influence has incredibly negatively impacted both of their lives. I never, ever thought of it that way. Yeah. Um, there's something beautiful about her session. Mm -hmm. The revelation that she has. Um and I don't, okay, so stop me if I'm wrong. Okay. The Burnside Batgirl mm -hmm. clearly can't be this one, doesn't right? Doesn't seem like it. It I, does like time Timeline-wise, it doesn't feel like it would be. Right, because it feels like the Burnside Batgirl is still technically in high school, where yeah. this one is clearly a grown-up and have having experienced the things. The, the things that one, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the funny part right there. Yeah, and like the we we finally because there's all those vignettes. Yes. Every, every issue, like the nine panels of like a, a video session. Yeah. That finally, we now know what's going on yes. with that. Yes. And the the level of suck that you would ha be in, knowing what had to be done with that. Yeah. Just yeah. Just really really cool. And there's one thing that I'm trying to see if that I can one find funny. it quickly. All right. So there's yes that. And then that. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see what you're... Okay, th that thing, right? That's not... Wait a minute. Yeah. It's it's a very subtle difference. But very important. Maybe. It, it's mm. something that when, that when you're reading this, pay attention to the different, different visuals. It, yeah. Because that matters. Yeah. Now I want to go back and read issue one. It was... Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, because that's why that when I thought, thought that first thing was like okay, that's just and then when they had them actually outside of sanctuary, and you're like, wait a minute, that's yeah. not. And there was no spoilers, none whatsoever. But we got like a whole conversation right there. Yeah, uh, you guys, 250 episodes. You guys know how good we are at that. Okay, like that's why y'all watch us. You know what it is. You know it. Um, all right, Conan the Barbarian number one. Nobody besides Jason Aaron could write this character. Period. This, this well. Period. And he, 
yeah, it's. <sighs> so, for those of you not familiar with Conan, shame. Shame! Yeah. It's this super badass, makes D&D look like Tinker Toys level, high fantasy, mm -hmm. violent, mm -hmm. violent world. Mm -hmm. uh, Conan, uh, it was, the Sumerians are kind of like Vikings, like it's, it's like an easy... Sure, sure. And Like if Vikings and Dothraki had a baby. And the baby came out wrong in the head. That's Sumerians. There you go. Uh, I think that's actually like a really good. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, it kind of is, uh, and it, and it picks up with a little bit of the. There's a little bit of a brief overview of like who who Conan is and and, and, and the world setting. Yes, um, but it immediately lets you know this is not the tale of Conan. No, this is the tale of how Conan dies as he's he become becomes a king later on in life and what happens to him there. Uh, but it's told through flashbacks. Mm -hmm. um, it it very much is a parental advisory book. It says yeah, so on the cover because yeah. um, there's there's people whose heads are being separated from their yeah, bodies. Yeah. There's tons of blood. Um, there's almost. Uh, it, I, nookie I feel with like the, there was. I, th I feel like there was some nook there. There was some. There was some, there nookie was some that nook. occurred. There was some nook. But yeah, it's just that it's, it's a beautiful book, though. Yeah. So it's it, it, if you want to take Thor, remove all of his powers, mm. and then mm -hmm. have, mm -hmm. have Jason Aaron write that. That's kind of kind of what it is because it oh, picks wow, up. Wow, that's a good way to describe it, him. Yeah, because he's he's in this world. Yeah, he's a pit fighter. Right. He's, he's he's killing for 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 sport and for money. Um, he's he's controlled very much by his superstitions and fears. Right. Um, his needs as a <laughs> as, as a male. Uh, we'll, we'll say in terms of like his 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 appetites. Um, and it lead and he's at this time period. He's still young, so he falls into these pit traps or these traps that, in this particular instance, uh, there is a witch. Uh, yeah. That wants to raise something from the dead, and she needs his his dead body and blood to do this, so. This, I think, is probably one of the best setups for why a hero is at stake. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, "Look, I it 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 didn't have to be you. You're just the best option right now." Yeah, like I've tried other things. Yeah, you like, and that's I think that's the the best part right there is like this is not like hallmarking Conan as like a hero yeah. and he's like, Oh, it's, it's Superman. We got to defeat Superman. Yeah. You're destined for this. Yeah. No, this is like, look, this is the, this is the scenario <laughs> Yeah. right now. You're the best one that I've found to be able to do this. Yeah. So tomorrow I might find somebody else, but yeah. you're here right now. Yeah. You're just experiment 23. Yeah, like literally. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to try it. We're going to make this work. Um, so without yeah. spoiling anything else, yeah, which is the hard part because there's so much fun stuff you to talk unpack, about. In this book. Yeah, um, if you are uh, of our age group, mm -hmm. uh, you have a mindset of who Conan the Barbarian is. Um, there are mm -hmm. movies, right? Conan yeah. the Destroyer. Um, what I adored is that this kind of has the same feel as the end of those those movies, where they're yeah. like, you know. That's a story for another time. You know, this is the range of where Conan goes. Yeah. And I definitely feel like this opening, which does a great shout out to the previous incarnations of yeah. Conan comics through Marvel, mm -hmm. um, kind of gives you this thing to to look back and yeah. really build on the legacy that is Conan. Um, this is not the only series, though, that's dropping. There's going to be, yeah, there's going to be Savage Sword of Conan. There's also going to be a Bolette miniseries. Yeah. And I, I they suckered me in with Bolette because I, they're... I don't, I don't know. No, seriously. Because there's this thing. I, all right. So my very first comic as a kid that I chose myself yeah. was Conan the Barbarian. Okay. I think it was Conan number 98, I believe. And I saw it in the spinner rack. It was in Odom's uh, grocery store in Tennessee. My grandparents gave me enough money to go pick out a comic. And I'm spinner, spinner, spinner. It's like all Spider-Man and all the other stuff. And then, all that looks good. And I'm like, holy... I can't use the word. <laughs> there's this dude in a loincloth mm -hmm. killing a crab person. And yes, I'm like, please. Okay, I'm, you. I'm in. Right. So the entire story is like they're on this 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 island and they're trying to get away and it's populated by crab people and they just have to get out and he's just the, like the full Nelson push one of them their faces into a steam vent was just priceless. Um, but then like in the next <laughs> issue, right? So, so the very next issue um, was the, was the death of Bolette. Right. And Bolette's like the only woman that Conan has ever really really loved. And she's the pirate queen and gave him the name Amra, uh, which is lion in her in her tongue. That's why the joke about so beautiful. being able to to move like a cat. Yes, in this that, was nice sort of, that was a nice little line. And it took me decades, literal decades, before I got a copy of that issue. And I had not read any Conan. Seriously. Right. Because it was the death of Bolette. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. And, and I'm Did what, you do that? You're a good friend. Yeah. You're a good friend. 
So nice. So yeah, and that was like just. Nah, nah, but, but we nah, got, but we got that issue. But yeah, so like Conan, like he he does like for for occupies this place in my heart. I understand that's that. Like now, yeah. what's funny is because of the movies, mm -hmm. I have a hard time not hearing Conan speak with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. accent. That's a hard thing to overcome. Yeah, but it's legit there. Mm -hmm. Like um, we gotta put this up here so you can see how beautiful it is. Um, but at the same time, there's something beautiful about the nature of what Conan is. Like, mm -hmm. he is just this guy yep. that happens to be, like, Le the LeBron James of, of barbarians. Like, that's, I mean, because, like, <laughs> yes, yes. physically speaking, yeah. like, he's like, wow, yeah, I'm bigger and stronger than, than pretty much everybody. Yeah. Not my fault. And make bones about it and I'll cut your head off. Yeah. Huh. That's how it works. Hi. Yeah. Happy Tuesday. Like, that's, <laughs> that's yeah. Conan. So um, it was great to see, like, the, the brash bullheadedness that mm -hmm. I know the character has. Yeah. Again, Jason Aaron, he, he knows yeah. what he's doing. Like, that's yeah. not even a question. I almost feel like you could go through Jason Aaron's library and pick different books that were clearly inspirations. Yeah. You know, uh, The G Damned mm -hmm. was definitely one where you're like, Kane seems very Conan-ish. Very much yeah. so if I do, you know, and like you said, yeah. Thor's run. Yeah. Um, Come on, like that's that's yeah. good stuff. Um, I think that's a great one. I can't not hear the theme song. Yeah, the whole time I'm trying not to. Yeah, and it's narrated by the by the old dude. It from, totally from the is. First movie. It totally is. That was. Oh man, that yeah. was so me too. That's why we're friends right here. Ah, oh. shoot. I think we're. That's when we're gonna spoil. <laughs> I think that's yes. just that's where it's at. Yes. There's there's not even a question. Yeah. I, I no disrespect to Heroes in Crisis, but. Conan the Barbarian yeah. number one. Come on. Um, that was awesome. Yeah, that was really good stuff. Uh, guys, thank you so very much for watching. If this is your first time, please, number one, hit the like button because yes. we like those. Mm -hmm. Number two, click the subscribe mm -hmm. and the bell so you get notified every time we have a new episode, which is every Every week, week for 250 weeks straight. Boom. Boom. Okay? So like that's a lot yeah and we're almost we at, at the magical milestone of 1,000 yes. subscribers so thank you all for subscribing definitely not. uh jump on board i think we're like 20 20 something yeah 23 23 23 away come yeah. on so you could be the 23rd right 23 and we can mm -hmm. do this mm -hmm. and it'd be amazing it's gonna be good stuff uh we're trying out new formats yep. so definitely uh talk to us in the comments let yeah. us know what you think about it uh the b-roll footage from last show <laughs> me jumping around like a crazy person it's i real. love that that made me feel so good, actually. Yeah. I was like, I should do that more often. I look kind of good. Look at those hops. Somebody sign me. Yeah. Don't. I'm, I'm not athletic. And I realized I'm 44 pounds overweight. I am too. I am Groot. No, like two pounds overweight. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> nah, I'm a lot more than that. <laughs> it's a lot more than that. Look at his head. There's <laughs> a lot. It's up here. It's all up here. It's that's where it is. But again, thank you guys so very yes. much. And uh, again, check out our Patreon mm -hmm. because that's where we're going to spoil stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of how we get down, that's, that's where the, way the fun to go. stuff happens. Yeah. Oh, yes.